Guys, today's conversation with Zach Lowther is one I think you're going to really enjoy. He shares what it was like to make his Major League Baseball debut and achieve that dream that every young baseball player desires to go towards, and that is to make the Major League. Zach did that earlier here in 2021, and he shares his story coming up right now on Sports Spectrum. Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to the show. I am Jason Romano. Thanks for joining us here on Sports Spectrum's podcast today. Our website, sportspectrum.com, that's the home base for all of our content. Make sure you check that out each and every day. Podcasts, devotionals, articles, stories, all intersecting sports with faith in Jesus Christ. You can check it out at sportspectrum.com. Dot com. And when you're there, make sure you sign up for our weekly newsletter. Sports Spectrum Weekly is free. It'll come right to your email inbox. It'll update you on all of the happenings at Sports Spectrum, all the stories, the articles, the podcasts, the devotionals that you may have missed can arrive in your email box every week with Sports Spectrum Weekly. You sign up for free right now at sportspectrum.com. And we have a little gift for you, a 10-day devotional for free, written by professional athletes, just like Zach Lowther, who's our guest here today on the show. Athletes writing the devotionals. It's 10 days you can go through with a team by yourself. It'll help increase your faith in God and decrease self. That's what we're about here at Sports Spectrum. The increase in Christ, as it says in John 3.30, he must increase and we must decrease. And you can sign up right now again for all of that. The devotional, Sports Spectrum Weekly, our newsletter, for free at sportspectrum.com. We also want to say thank you to our partners today on the show, Convoy of Hope, a faith-based nonprofit organization with a driving passion to feed the world through children's feeding initiatives, community outreaches, and disaster response. Think about this. In the United States and throughout the world, there are countless families that are living on the fringe or have fallen into the depths of poverty and suffering. So Convoy of Hope, what they do is they stand in the gap. They believe that they can ease suffering while serving those in need with love and dignity, service, excellence, integrity, advocacy, unity, support, partnership, and most of all, hope. So join Convoy of Hope. You can join with them and partner with them and your favorite professional athletes to fight hunger, poverty, and suffering in the United States and throughout the world. Check them out at ConvoyNation.com to learn more, to donate, and become a part of the great work that Convoy of Hope is doing over at ConvoyNation.com. All right, let's get to our conversation with Zach Lowther. He's with the Baltimore Orioles. He's one of their top prospects. He was 13-7 and seven with a 2.55 ERA in 2019 at AA Bowie. This year, he starts the season off at the alternate site, coming out of spring training, and then gets the call up in April and makes his Major League Baseball debut. And as it is with a lot of young pitchers, he has some highs, he has some lows. He's currently, as we record this, with the Norfolk Tides in AAA, hoping to get back to the Major Leagues, and I have no doubt that he'll have that opportunity again this year. He also just became a dad. He's a dad to a a four-and-a-half-month, five-month little girl. And so a lot happening with Zach Lowther in 2021. He becomes a Major League Baseball pitcher, and he becomes a dad. He's got some great stories, and he shares it all, what he's going through right now on Sports Spectrum. Let's take a listen to Zach Lowther. I want to start with your MLB debut. Uh, It took place back in April. You got called up. You you pitched against the A's. Uh, Tell me about that day and getting the call and getting that opportunity to make your debut. Yeah, it was it was something, I mean, you always dream of, and it's never really goes the way you, you think about it going, <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the lead up to it, my, my wife and daughter had just gotten to buoy, which was the alternate site for the Orioles. And so we were there and there had been rumors about, you know, possibly getting the call and all that. And, you know, the game ended, went to sleep about five seconds later, my phone rings on loud. I run into the bathroom of the hotel and I answer the call and it was me getting called up and I wake my wife up and 
she's like, is this a dream? Like what's going on? And it was that, that right there, the reaction and like that experience with them being there was something that that's how I wanted it to happen. And in baseball, things don't normally go the way you really want them to go. Mm -hmm. So to have that one happen that way was really cool for me. And then the next day, I was able to get my parents there, um, get my grandparents who have been like a huge influence in my baseball career, get everyone to, uh, to Baltimore to watch me pitch. We went through the game and like, I, I I did know a lot of the guys just from some spring trainings, um, being able to kind of put some faces to names and all that, that guys I hadn't met, but, um, getting there, everyone was super excited. They were like, new face like let's go this is really cool a debut is always something that is is exciting for everyone around yeah but we had our ace going so i was i was the in case of emergency um guy so (laughs) i got in or i got to the field and i was kind of just sitting there i'm like oh you know we're up like I don't know, two, two to one. I'm not going in, you know, and they're not going to put the rookie in, yeah. but I'm anxious as I'll get out. And, you know, just being in the stadium, having that experience. And we ended up going by like up by five runs. So it wasn't a save opportunity anymore. And they're like, Hey, you're in, you got to get going. And I'm like, Oh crap. So <laughs> I, I'm a starter. I need, I need a set schedule and all that. And yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get going and my heart's racing. Everything's going. And I, every time before I go out to pitch, I would stop at the, whether it's the last step, the gate, and I just take a deep breath. I have a focal point that I usually look at and I just breathe through that. And once I got to the gate, I realized how far I had to run to the mound so I couldn't really breathe through that. But once I got to the mound, I was able to kind of just like center myself. And it, it was a surreal moment because it was, I'm actually a major leaguer. It wasn't right. just, I, I'm happy to be here. Like I, I, I've worked to get to this point and being able to kind of take that all in. And that moment was something that was really surreal to me. I love that. There's a bunch of things I can follow up on that. The first I think is that Oakland coming into that game had like a really long winning streak. Right. Um, so that game, like you said, you have your ACE on the mound. I presume you mean John means and he's pitching and he pitched a no hitter this year. He's having a phenomenal year and you don't know if you're going to, I mean, you have how many other pitchers are on, you know, standby, I guess for a game like that, six, seven other pitchers, maybe a little bit more in the bullpen. So you're, first day there you're thinking all right let me just soak all this in and you get the call did you know that you might get a call before the game started with did they give you a heads up zach hey you know just kind of be ready here you know i think we might get you in there if 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 things you know work the way they might work towards yeah so we usually have like a hey we're we're gonna use you in this situation and there's a list so i was the we were up by a lot early in the game or we were down by a lot okay. just to, just to get me in. Well, the, the middle innings where I would have come into play kind of came and went. So not that I checked out, but you know, you got your setup guy, you got your closer and like normally in a game where your ace is pitching, it's going to be a close game and you know, they're going to want to use guys that they've seen before. So it came around to the eighth inning and our team decided to put up, I think it was six runs in that inning and extend our lead to where you didn't need a setup guy. You didn't need a closer. You didn't need any of that stuff. So they, they all warmed up and I was just sitting there like, all right, they're going in, you know, I get to watch them. Mm -hmm. And they told me immediately, like I probably had less than five minutes to really get going. And I mean, my heart's just pounding because I want to, I want to get ready. I want to do well. There's so much going through my head, like, and just being able to kind of like center myself before I went out there made all the difference. And it's happening so fast, right? You said five Mm -hmm. minutes, all of this between sitting down, getting up and being in a major league baseball game all happens just in minutes, right? Yeah, it was, it was very fast and it could have been slower than that, but my mind was moving at about a million miles a minute. So <laughs> that, that's, that just goes to show how, how like crazy everything was for the experience. I can only imagine the, you know, it's the dream for every player to reach that level, Zach, and you get there. Um, you, 
I think people wonder, well, how did he do? Well, you pitched a clean inning, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a clean inning. I gave up a hit, but yeah. I got no my runs. First strikeout. Yeah. No yeah. runs. And closed it out on the strikeout. And you, like you said, you're a starter. So that must have been uh, just on all levels a little weird coming into a game in the ninth inning to pitch one inning when you're a guy that's pitched, you know, as a starter for a while, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, just the the mindset, everything is completely different about a starter and a reliever. And like, not that one is better than the other, but I I have worked myself to to the bone to try to get my starter routine down pat and like get it consistent. And then it's like, Hey, you're going to be a reliever. It's like, Oh crap. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> you got to kind of time it, but condense it into five minutes versus whatever it is, 30 minutes before a game when you're probably getting ready. Mm-hmm. Normally. Um, did you keep any, were you able to keep things from that game, get the ball, get the Jersey, you know, anything else? you know, I, li- I know there's always, uh, you know, mementos that you want to keep anyways in those first, moments i just saw i think it was tommy hunter with the mets a couple weeks ago got his first major league hit and he's like 34 years old and he just thought it was the greatest thing he accomplished in his career of like yeah. more than a decade in the majors was getting a, a hit in the game and he's like i want that ball um yeah were you able to get the ball jersey things like that yeah i was able to keep my jersey um my first pitch and then my first strikeout pitch nice so i, I have all those um you know, they have to go through the proper channels and whatnot. So I didn't get them right away, but I, I was able to get them. And those are going to be probably what I hang on to for a very long time. I, I would, I would think that would be something that, uh, your little four and a half year old, uh, child someday will take a look at and be like, dad had this pretty cool moment. Um, back in 2021, I think it's pretty awesome. Zach Lowther. Um, but it's funny because baseball is a game of highs and lows, right? Uh, ups and downs. I wouldn't even call them lows, just really ups and downs. So you come back and you pitch in your first start and it doesn't go as well. Right. And that's kind of how sports and baseball, you know, it's about the, it's about having those, those, you know, mountaintop moments, but sometimes you have to go through some valleys as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the last game I was like really pitching in besides my debut was in 2019 right. and to come out on such like a high in 2021, getting my debut um, and then getting another start in there. It, it, those were the two highs as it, the beginning of that was as high as you could possibly get. And then immediately it was an, a low, a crashing, crashing low right after that start. It was, so yeah, I mean it's it's like a roller coaster. You just got to kind of ride it. You know, there's going to be another hill coming up. You just got to try to make it last as long as possible. So yeah, no, it, you can't be judged on one outing, right? I mean, it is a results driven game, but you can't be judged on one outing. It's opportunity, and hopefully, you get another one, and I'm sure you will. And then, you know, let let, let things fall where they may, and you be ready for that, right? Yeah, you just got to take advantage of the opportunities and make the most of it. I want to take a quick break and tell you a little bit more about our partners, Convoy of Hope. We love our partnership with them and what they do. Fighting hunger, poverty, and suffering in the United States and throughout the world is so awesome and so important, and you can be a part of it as well. In partnership with friends and fans, Convoy of Hope serves those in need by delivering things like hot meals and groceries, haircuts, health and dental screenings, family portraits, socks, shoes, clothing, things that you and I take for granted. That's what Convoy of Hope is providing for countless families who are living on the fringe or have fallen into the depths of poverty and suffering. They also serve communities in need throughout the world by supporting Convoy of Hope's innovative international programs. You can serve with Convoy of Hope and be a part of the great work they are doing right now by going to ConvoyNation.com to learn more. ConvoyNation.com. That's where you can pray. You can partner with them. You can donate. It's just such a great cause. Faith-based nonprofit organization with a driving passion to feed the world through children's feeding initiatives, community outreaches, and disaster response. Check them out at ConvoyNation.com. Zach Lowther is joining us here on Sports Spectrum. We're so glad to have him here at Baltimore Orioles pitcher. He's in the organization. He's in AAA as we currently record this with the Norfolk Tides. Um, this year has also been a pretty cool one for you because early 2021, before there was any 
Major League Baseball debut. There was this uh, parent debut for Zach Lowther becoming a dad. Um, tell us about that. Describe that moment and now you having that title of, of father. That was that takes the cake from making my major league debut because there were always certain things that you, you want in life. And like when you're younger, you think the priority is going to be, you know, top of your career, top of your job list, like whatever that is. But becoming a father was something that I, I didn't know what to expect with it. Um, I didn't know how I'd feel. And now that my daughter's here, I, I couldn't, I, I honestly couldn't picture her any differently. Um, it, it was that the pregnancy and the, the, the birth were very difficult. Like my wife was sick a lot. Mm. Um, pregnancy di or the delivery didn't go as planned. Just a lot of complications, long time in there. And I, I normally am the calm, cool, collected guy in our relationship. And <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever been as stressed. And my wife is usually the one that's getting stressed and I'm telling her to calm down and she's in delivery and I'm, I'm the one freaking out. She's like, Hey, you got to calm down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> and I'm like, how, how does this work like that? So it, it was going to that experience. And then the past four and a half months it have been really, really just special. They, they were able to come down to spring training, which like I said, that was, that was one of those things that growing up, I went to spring training with my family. So mm. having my daughter there, she's not going to remember it, but I will. Um, well, there's just pictures and everything else. And, you know, in this yeah. 21 digital revolution that you'll be able to document it, you know? No, oh, absolutely. Like she got to see me pitch in my a major league spring training game, which was really, really cool for me. She was at my debut, just like all these special life moments that, I had always pictured for myself and my family are finally coming true, which years ago thought it was just a distant, distant uh, thing that we, we might not ever get to. Well, let me give you a little heads up here. So fast forward 16 plus years uh, and imagine the anxiety of sitting in a car and you're in the driver's or you're in the passenger side and your daughter's driving. That's where I am, Zach. And I just went through four and a half months of anxiety, uh, like I've never felt as a dad in my life, trying to help my daughter learn how to drive. Now she got her license and she's a good driver now. But I told my wife, I said, that's an anxiety that I've never experienced. I mean, probably since she was born. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm just giving you a heads up, maybe, you know, put that down in the, in the journal and, you know, fast forward 17 years and I'm, you know, don't rush it, but that moment, you don't think it's going to come anytime soon. Trust me. It just flew by the last <laughs> 17 years. And here I am in my forties trying to be a dad to a, a teenage girl who's learning how to drive. So enjoy the four and a half month st stage and the stages that come after that, because, uh, they fly by, dude, they really, you probably seen it just in the last couple months, right? How fast it really goes. Yeah, I mean, ooh, I've, I've basically seen her. They came down to Florida in February, so she was two months old. So I saw her the whole month of February, didn't see her in March, and then saw her now, or didn't see her at the end of March in April, and now I'm seeing her now. And it's just crazy. It's like a whole different little human being every time she comes to visit. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like, I can't even fathom like, how much she actually is growing. Yeah, it's awesome. Thankfully, we have technology today where you can really, like I said, document that and kind of keep a, a good, almost a digital scrapbook of the journey of these of these little ones as they grow and grow. It's pretty cool. Um, I do want to ask you because you're, you know, 2019, you mentioned you pitched with Bowie in double A and had a really good year, 13 wins, 255 ERA, 154 strikeouts. Um, and that's a you know, a moment where you're in double A and you're one of those high prospects, you know, you were a second round pick. So Baltimore wants to see you succeed and you're doing well, not just wanting to see you succeed because they invested in you, but you're actually pitching well. And then 2020 happens. And, uh, you know, I probably saw you pitch, by the way, thinking back, because you pitched, I assume you pitched against the yard goats up here in Hartford, Connecticut uh, at one yeah. point. And that's where I am. I'm up here in Connecticut and we went to a couple yard goats games. So it's very possible. I saw you pitch in 19 but then 2020 happens and there is no, especially for those that aren't sustained major leaguers, you know, in that 20 and that two month bubble that we all saw last year, 
uh, for Major League Baseball, but it was the minor league guys, the guys like yourself, the prospects that I just, there was no games to pitch in. Um, what was that like? I would love to hear your perspective on the 2020 year um, because I assume you were at spring training and then everything stops and then there is no more pitching, at least for a lot of guys, maybe like yourself too, going into last year. Yeah. Yeah, so last year was super exciting just from the the sense that that was the first time I was ever invited to major league spring training. I got to experience that, and then the pandemic shut us down. I mean, we were there one day, and then they were like, hey, you got to head home. I'm like, what? I'm not supposed to go home until October. (laughs) Like, this is is weird. Um, So we thought it was going to be a short thing. I left my car down in Florida, everything. I just flew home. Um, anyways, got home and we, we didn't know how long it was going to be. So it was, it was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just try to stay on the same schedule. Well, in Cleveland, Ohio, it's a lot (laughs) colder than it is in Florida in March and April. So, (laughs) so, uh, I, I had a workout inside still, um, and I was like, well, I need, I need some stuff. So I ended up building a pitching mound with my uh, coach that I grew up with. And I, I worked out there with one of our friends and then a facility that would let me in. So that I did that. And then my wife ended up getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. And so being able to be home for a pregnancy that like I wasn't expected to be home for. You know, that being able to be home for that was something that I I appreciated more than I thought I would, just from the sense that my wife struggled at that time and I was able to, to be there to help her. Yeah. Um we ended up buying a house right before she got pregnant, so it was kind of perfect. We were busy, you know, we had stuff to do. And did you ever go get your car, by the way? You didn't leave it down in Florida yeah. all year, did you? <laughs> I ended up going to get it, and then uh, it was like three months later. I was like, "Oh, geez." Well, good good part was my wife was working from home, and yep. I obviously didn't have anywhere to go, so yeah. uh, it, it was easy. We only needed one, but yeah, I mean, it was it was very it was weird to be home for sure. But by the end of it, I was like, "This this feels pretty normal. This is pretty cool." Like it was it was almost like I was meant to be there that year. And that, that kind of made it uh, a lot easier to like comprehend and like deal with because baseball has been my life for so long. And that was the first time I've ever had a summer since I was 11, 10 or 11. Mm. And just being able to kind of relax, be with my family. And that's really all you could do. At that time. Well, we're going to, I want to intersect the conversation with faith a little bit because we'll talk about your journey of faith in a second, but I've talked to a lot of athletes and a lot of people who thought 2020 was one of those awakening years for them. It just really kind of calmed them down. It quieted them, you know, forced us all into this sort of, um, for lack of a better word, you know, bubble, you know, at home, um, it forced us to slow down. It forced us to become patient because we, there was so much unexpectedness, uh, unexpected, you know, what was going to happen. We didn't know, but from a faith perspective for you, what was that like, you know, kind of, and I we will get into your journey in a second, but just, was there a lesson or something that God was teaching you and showing you when you think back to last year, um, and such a different year and maybe a year you'll never have again, as long as you're a major league baseball player, or a professional baseball player, you may never have another year like 2020 where you're home, um, during the summer, you know? So, yeah, I, I think like the biggest thing that I always struggled with in, in my life was what, what's my purpose. And now be, I was able to be home for a year and like, I had time to try things that I would never try to experience things I would never experience. And like, try to find out who I was. And I had a lot of time to like reflect on, you know, what I liked, what, what made me, me outside of baseball. Sure. Cause baseball is going to be such a, a small part of my life that in the end, I want to be known as, you know, a good father, a good husband, you know, all these other things. So it, 2020 gave me time to kind of like sit down and realize that baseball is going to end at some point. What are you, what do you want to be known for? And that, that kind of helped me, dictate what I, what I wanted to focus on and being able to kind of just sit 
I mean, I had more time than I knew what to do with. So being able to kind of just sit there and reflect and like talk to God and be like, all right, well, what's, what's my purpose outside of baseball and, you know, doing projects around the house, doing stuff for my wife, like things that I would do, but I never had like a passion for before being able to, you know, do things without, you know, her having to say something and all that. I was, I was real good at that before her, Hey, you want to do this? And I'm like, ah, no, <laughs> but being able to kind of take that initiative and like find that purpose that, that being like, this is, this is who I am. This is who I want to be and making it into a reality. So now that I'm a father that I never thought that a little human being could make me feel certain feelings. And now I, it's completely changed who I am. Like, I think that this was 2020. It was a terrible year for so many people, but 2020 for me was probably the most beneficial year in my 25 year old life. It, it, it taught me so much about who I am, my relationship with God and just being able to understand that there is the deeper meaning behind living it's not just everyday mundane tasks that, you know, you wake up and do all over again. It's the excitement of what does tomorrow have for me? How, how can I deepen my relationship with God? How can I deepen my relationship with my wife, my daughter, like so many different obstacles that are thrown at you that you can either attack or just kind of do routinely. Yeah. I think that's well said. And I think a lot of people have said, obviously there is a lot of heartache, in 2020, but there was a lot of people who said the same thing that you just said that 2020 was actually in many ways and a, a huge blessing. Um, and that's really neat, you know, that God can turn, you know, what, you know, the world might think for evil and turn it into good in some ways, uh, for a lot of people. And obviously that's not to, um, you know, take away any of the heartache that a lot of people have suffered and gone through, but to find some good in, in the midst of the bad is, is actually a pretty cool thing to see Zach. Um, let's rewind a little bit because you mentioned your relationship with God. For a lot of us, we have a moment that where we can point to where that started. For some others, it's it's a gradual process. What is that story for you as you you know think back to your journey of faith and your journey and your relationship with the Lord? Where did that take shape for you and kind of coming to where it is today? So I always I grew up and I went to a Catholic elementary school up until eighth grade, and then. My dad had coached at a uh, public um, high school, so I ended up going to public high school. But then in my college recruiting, um, schools start coming at, like, offers and all that. And the one that kind of stuck out was Xavier, and I ended up going to Xavier. But, you know, it was, you know, money had a lot to do with it. Um, But as soon as I got there... I was still this young high school kid and didn't really, didn't really understand, you know, how to conduct myself as an adult, but it was probably, so that was 2014. I started there and it was probably right after my freshman year in 2015 that one of my roommates uh, started asking me to go to church with him. It was on a Wednesday night at 10 AM or 10 PM. So like, you know, I had nothing else going on in the middle of the week. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll go. Like I'm, I'm religious, but as I went off to college, it, it kind of took a backseat to the experience and all that. And of course, once I got back into it, it was, it, it kind of made me realize how off track I'd gotten with what I wanted, what, what my goals were in life. And, um, started going with them more and I, I really, really enjoyed it. And, then I went off to summer ball. I was in, I was in the middle of Wisconsin living on my own with the host family. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of downtime. Um, and I just started reading. I, I would read, um, some baseball books to see like how they had journeys. And my, the one I really liked was Mariano Rivera's and yeah, that book, he, he grew up very poor in the Dominican Republic and, just to hear his, the way that he talked about his life and his spiritualness and like how he approached things that, that changed a lot for me. So as I went back to college, 
that same friend who had taken me to church uh, at the end of my freshman year, we started going every week. The the faith got deeper and deeper, and like we'd have actual conversations about the mass and the homily and all that after, which I was never I was never big into that, and that that kind of just like opened up my perspective on like what I was doing in life. And after that year, it was. I was almost a 4.0 student. That was the best year of baseball that started my uh, journey to get drafted and then to the major leagues. Like mm. that, that is like the singular focus on like what changed the trajectory of my life, my career, my just everything about it. And I, I think back to that and I'm actually still roommates with that same, same kid. So. Yeah, just being able to kind of like they, I know in baseball there's a there's that same spot too that like hey this changed your career and that time I I, I wish I remember the date it was it was a Wednesday in 2015 I know that but <laughs> no it, it that moment we started going a lot more chapels all the time for um, every Sunday during our college season we'd go we'd have chapel um just being able to kind of experience that and deepen that with my relationships outside of baseball and inside of baseball well you use the two words that i want to kind of dive into real quick here as we wind down you said relationship and religion and i thought it was interesting i don't really care what quote-unquote religion you are and christianity is a religion but I think that the deeper aspect of faith and spirituality personally i had the same experience as well was when it became a relationship. Can you kind of describe, and maybe that's what you meant when you said that, that you started going and it turned from being quote unquote religious to an actual relationship with the Lord. Um, what does that mean when you hear that? Like the idea of having a relationship versus just a person that goes to church or follows a bunch of rules. What was, what was it for you that um, kind of hit when you hear that word relationship and as that's grown and developed over the years? I, I think it's just, like a relationship you would have with a family member or a significant other. I think it's that understanding the ability to listen to what they're saying and not try to, you know, go against what they're saying just to be defiant. Um, for me, it's, it's a lot to do with the ability to grow. You know, that relationship, a relationship isn't going to go anywhere unless you let it. So being right. able to kind of, accept what is being said and ask the questions and be able to be willing to grow in that, that relationship is something that I, I take forward as like a challenge, just like I would take forward, you know, going against the Oakland A's in my debut, like everything in that is a challenge and there's going to be obstacles in that relationship, but being able to understand that it's a long-term thing, it's not going to go anywhere. So being able to, ride the wave of the ups and downs of the relationship and know that it's always going to be there, that you can go back and turn to it is something that gives me a lot of solace in, in the fact that I, I don't have to be actively thinking about it, but I know that that relationship with God is always there. Mm. You know, there, I know there's times like I, my last couple outings, I've been struggling, but that relationship goes deeper than baseball for me. So being able to, okay, I'm going to leave that at the field. I don't, my daughter doesn't need a bad attitude from her father. Sure. My wife doesn't need that. And so like, I, I, I go in the locker room after the game, I sit down, I, I just be like, all right, I got to figure this out. And I just listen to what's being said or what, what he's presenting to me mm -hmm. and being able to grow with that. You know, I, I'm never going to stop growing in my relationship with my daughter, my wife, or in baseball. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of growth for me to still be had, but I have come a long way, and I'm very proud of that. That's good. That's well said. And I think I've heard it said, uh, it's not head knowledge. It really starts with the heart. And I think relationships start with the heart, relationships with people, and our relationship with God starts with the heart. It starts with the heart, and where is our heart? Um, that I think it's from out of the heart, you know, is where we, uh, grow and really where it starts into how we 
live our life in terms of both with God and with our families and our friends and people that are in our life. So I think that's really well said, Zach. Um, as we wind down, I want to ask you one question that I like to ask a lot of guys who've been in the minor league system for a few years. Um, I, I've told this to many players. There needs to be more books written about lo- the life of minor league baseball players because it is, A, it's not glamorous. B, there's more stories than you'll ever imagine. Just bus rides and just crazy things happening. Guys getting called up all over the place. Just things happening on the field. Uh, I once talked to a guy who um, dedicated his life to the Lord and became a follower of Christ in right field in the middle of the fifth inning of a baseball game in a mi- in the minor league. So you, you just hear there's so many stories, both faith driven and not. Um, for our audience, we like to keep it PG. But can you share maybe your favorite minor league story that you've experienced thus far um, as you've made the trek through the system? Uh, and this will be, you know, where we land the plane here. Oh. Minor league. I, oh, man. We, I've gotten very lucky in the minors with like bus trips and all that. Okay. Nothing the, too crazy. The one, no, the one we had in college. Okay. And that, that counts. The, <laughs> This will be like, this was the toughest one we've had so far. There were two that will compete for that. Actually, okay. we were on a 14 hour bus trip from Cincinnati to Louisiana. Ooh, 14 hours. One, one bus, like 30 guys. Ooh. It was a sleeper bus. So what, is, what, did that smell, what did that smell like when you guys get off that bus? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you imagine that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we were, we were going down, bus broke down twice. Oh. we had it we were sitting on the side of the road side of the highway in the middle of nowhere there were 30 guys that walked on the on-ramp around to a cracker barrel and just sat there and stared at our bus while we <laughs> we, we were eating and we were just staring at our bus waiting to be fixed and the other one was oh it ended up taking 21 hours to get uh to oh the place God. yeah it was that was brutal but you made the um, game on time to play Oh yeah. We always left the day early, you know, just in <laughs> case, you know, we had some bus troubles <laughs> and, and on that day you did. <laughs> yeah. The other one was, it was, we were so excited. I mean, we had the Xavier bus, you know, the, we were coming home from the conference tournament. It was in Aberdeen, Maryland. We were going to Cincinnati yep. and everyone's hyped up and there's it's smoke in the back of the bus just from like, engine failure or something <laughs> so we pulled off in the middle of pennsylvania into this random parking lot we were supposed to go back to cincinnati and watch the selection show to see where we'd be playing well we were in cincinnati or we we're in the middle of pennsylvania sitting there it was it was three in the morning we got a hotel room because no bus was around slept for four hours drove to a buffalo wild wings watched the <laughs> watch the selection show. And then we got back to Cincinnati and the next day we left. So it was just like, you, you're, you're not in one place for too long in, in baseball. It's very, not, I, I don't want to say not many people can do it, but it, it, you get used to it, but it's not what you would choose to do. It is a different lifestyle. And I, I think when you're in the middle of moments like that, you're like, what in the world is going on? But when you look back, you're like, that's a great story. Like, I'll tell that story to everybody who asks, right? Because <laughs> yeah, you're going uh, through those things, you're going to have a story to tell everybody for the rest of your life. It's definitely something very unique. And not, not many people get to experience the, the situations that we've been put in. So it, it makes you feel a little better. Like, hey, it's, it's special to me. <laughs> and you're cramming all that everything into one bus. I just think about the first bus you described. My goodness, 30 guys. And- oh, <laughs> yeah, not a lot of room in there i would presume zach yeah luckily as you go up levels they give you a little better uh bus rides but holy crap it's <laughs> it can get very squished very fast that's and good. Smelly. that's good and i'm sure i don't know if you've had the experience in the majors but they don't have bus rides too often in the majors you're on a what did you get to no. go you didn't go to go on a road trip yet right with baltimore or you did i, I did um after my debut I I was staying in Bowie, which is like half hour away from uh, Baltimore. Sure. And they called us and we had what was called the taxi squad. Okay. Yeah. And with with COVID they created the taxi squad um, in case like 
you got to a different city and with the travel, someone got sick or tested positive for COVID. So we had backups and I was one of those backups for the West coast trip out to Oakland and Seattle. So that was my first charter plane, uh, plane ride. That was my first like experience on there. And that was, that was really cool. It was, it was like that. That was what I pictured when, you know, you think of the major leagues and I, being it's, able to experience it's a, that. It's not a crammed 30 person bus going down, you know, to, from Xavier. <laughs> this was, this was the big leagues and you saw it, even if it was just a little glimpse of it, you saw it, right. Being in the major. Oh leagues. yeah. <laughs> I, I want to go back. <laughs> That's for sure. They, may, they make it desirable. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we hope you are going to be back soon. And uh, we're just glad that you shared your story here, Zach Louther. Thanks for, thanks for being here, my friend. Uh, great to get, uh, to know you, to connect with you. Hopefully we'll meet you in person sometime and wish you all the best uh, on a long, hopefully long and prosperous major league career. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. That was Zach Louther. Really appreciate Zach for being here on Sports Spectrum today and wish him nothing but the best. His career really just getting started at 25 years old. But as he mentioned, having a passion and a desire and a purpose for even something greater than baseball, understanding that that platform of baseball can be used to encourage others and to point people to both God and to more purposeful things in life. So really cool there to hear Zach Louther kind of getting him at the groundswell of his career, just making his Major League Baseball debut here in 2021. And hopefully he has a nice long MLB career. And just appreciate him for being here today on Sports Spectrum. We also appreciate you for tuning in and downloading and subscribing to this podcast. Do us a favor, make sure you tell someone about Sports Spectrum. And then if you like what you heard, please consider rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcast. And like I said, tell someone about Sports Spectrum. Our desire is to bring Jesus back into the conversation, to bring God back into the conversation and talk about faith and talk about sports. That's what we are here at Sports Spectrum. So if you love Jesus and you love sports, this is the place to turn to. And if you know someone who loves Jesus and loves sports, tell them about Sports Spectrum and the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. We hope you'll check us out next time right here on the show. Have a great rest of your day. My name is Jason Romano, and we'll see you next time.